Hello everyone, I'm Allie, if you don't know me. Uh, welcome to this YouTube Live. And this is Jenny. Hello. So Jenny is joining me for one of the first, have you ever done a video, Jenny? No. No, Jenny's a, Jenny has avoided videos <laughs> for a long time. Jenny's like Anna, where it's like, here's a beautiful design, but I am not recording this. Um, the introverts of this world that don't like to be on screen, she's like, how many people are gonna watch this? How many people am I gonna see? So everybody be nice, say hello to Jenny as well. So those of you joining in, the reason that Jenny is here is because she helps Anna to curate the box and to gather up all the box materials and decide what they're working on and decide what they're making. And then also you can see exactly what it is that Jenny had fun making. So Jenny, tell us a little bit about your design. So um, what I did was I used the most recent box materials for the uh, May subscription box and did um, a circular brick stitch um, around one of the cotton pearls. Um, and then I used the 11s and 15s and melon beads as well as some daggers. And then two little tiny, three little tiny O beads and a little daisy. And if you just missed the unboxing, make sure you can go back to uh, Facebook, so we're one platform from another, go back to Facebook and you will be able to check out on Facebook uh, the unboxing of the video as well. So we went in and I took basically Jenny's idea here, played around with it and thought, okay, what came in some of the other boxes that people might have or what might you have in your stash? And I'm going to take off my big hunk and amber necklace. It's heavier than it looks. Um, what you have in your stash and what you can do as a design element to kind of throw it in there. Uh, Jenny, just as we get started, we're waiting for people to come in and uh, kind of gather up their materials. Actually, I think I need to re refocus a tiny bit since I'm going a little bit more centered. Uh, so tell us your honesty. What was your interaction with the thread that you used? What thread did you use? Uh, I used the KO thread. Um, Would you use it again for the brick stitch? Yes and no. I like the KO. I I like, I've always been a wildfire girl. Do I have a blue one? Yeah, Jen. You're good. <laughs> You're good, Jenny. Um, Keep going. I usually like to use wildfire, but when I'm doing anything with the 15s that I want to go back through several times, the KO is really good for that. Um, and I think you did, when we get to it, I think you did your fringe a little bit differently than I mm -hmm. did. So we'll kind of see how you changed it up and then how I came through, because I think you went through the seed beads or the beads again, mm -hmm. and I didn't. I kept to the yeah. outer edge. So we'll kind of see how to go about doing that as we're creating. So hello to everybody also to, it's uh, 3.30 a.m. Oh my goodness, Rosemary in Australia, mm -hmm. it's 3.30 a.m. So Rosemary, I know it's a tiny bit blurry. I'm gonna make sure that I can get mm -hmm. it nice and non-blurry for you. Oh and we'll center up. This is the fun of trying to go from one platform to the other, and as we do it, the cameras, we switch and all of that. So hello everyone to Thank Heather you. and to Lauren. They're saying hi, Jenny. And uh, in case you wanna know, it's Jenny with an I, in case anybody wants to know. Mm -hmm. uh, Jenny with an I, that's coming in too. So hello everyone that is joining in on us. So those of you joining in, what I want you to gather up is, you're gonna gather up your beading needle and I'm using a size 12 beading needle. So when you're looking at what size beading needle to use, because we're using the 15 OC beads, it's a lot easier to go in and to use the size 12 needle right away. You'll be able to get through with a 10, but the 12 is way easier. I also had somebody mention earlier today and ask earlier today, they said, I got .006 and I have a size 10 needle. That's not even a size 12, that's a size 10 needle. So it's gonna be thicker and bigger hole. Make sure to flatten out the end of your thread. That's gonna make it way, way easier for you to go in and to actually stew your needle, so when you're working on it. And on the bottom of my thread, and I'm using the Wildfire Point 006 Wildfire Beading Thread, and this is just a big spool, the 25 yard. I have a stop bead on the end of about four feet of thread. Now, these are actually not, here Jenny, you can hold up and I'll hold up. Let's hold up our earrings. So here, if you were gonna sample one, do, 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 do. so there you go. So they're not that big. I'm actually gonna make a matching one because I want it as earrings. Mine reminds me of malachite, even though it's like the 
the uh, gemstone or the glass. The different colors kind of remind me of malachite or regular. So they're fun for earrings or the, uh, you can do it as a pendant. You can add more drops. There's more drops that happen to be sitting here that I'm going to use. So you can really kind of trade it up, add more drops, and really have fun with the design as you're working on it. You could leave these off too and then make a bracelet. Yeah, you can totally link them together, change up the designs. Really what we're hoping to teach you right now is using circular brick stitch. Circular brick stitch can be used in so many different ways, and you can have it where you have an open form, you can have it where you're going around a bead. And we've had videos on this, but they might not be exactly here. So hello also to Deborah said, first time watching your show, wanna learn? Welcome, thanks so much. Susie in Maryland. Hello, Susie in Maryland. We are too. So, hey, what do you know? We're in Maryland too. <laughs> so, so what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of push these off to the side. You'll still be able to see them. And I'm going to show you circular brick stitch. So I do have a white bead here, but I'm going to hold it mainly in my hand so you won't have trouble seeing it. If we do have trouble seeing it, we'll go in and I'll grab a color, a purple or a black or something to sit it on. So I have here a six millimeter faceted round. And what's your, your center one is a... Uh, Eight millimeter, eight millimeter cotton pearl. Yep, so we have six millimeter, eight millimeter. You can do this with any size. If you use four, it's a little bit harder just because it's smaller. So I would recommend a six or an eight millimeter to get started. And if you use something that's flat or round, uh, round is definitely the easier way to go mm -hmm. to get started. So I have a halo bead here, if you're not familiar with it. The halo, this is a one hole halo. We have two hold, one hold. And all I'm going to do is sew through the halo with my size 12 needle, and I'm sewing right through the halo, right through the six millimeter bead, out to the other side, pulling my four feet of my beading thread through, and it's gonna stop with a stop bead there. The stop bead is a bead not included on your project, and it's coming off completely. Once I'm done there, basically we need to get thread on the exterior. So Jenny's, you can hardly see it because you use the gold. Mm -hmm. So you can't really see her, her gold KO thread there, but you're wrapping the thread around the bead. You can see just a tiny, you can't see yeah, it either because I, <laughs> I use green <laughs> beads. Uh, so look at that, I thought ahead of time. So I use the green beads and in case you are wondering material wise, this is a one hold gold halo bead along with a six millimeter faceted white shimmer bead. The 11 O seed beads that I'm gonna be adding on my next round are the Miyuki Semi-Frosted Emerald Lined Light Gray. Not a lack of descriptions on this <laughs> tube. <laughs> Jenny used bronze, or no, you used purple, whatever the tea time ones are. They're like a nice mm -hmm. little lavender color. Yeah, in the, from the tea time bracelet. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap your thread around the exterior of the halo. So you can see I moved the stop bead just kind of out of the way just a little bit to hold it out. I'm going back through that entire halo bead. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna pop that green thread right on the exterior of the halo. Now, one thing that you don't have with the round bead versus the halo bead is that the thread can kind of pop towards the top. That's why I said if you're doing it with a round bead, it's gonna be a little bit easier. Um, if you're doing it with the halo, it's a fun practice of getting it to stay to the side. I'm gonna pull that tight so that stop bead goes right in there and that way the thread sticks to the outer side. Again, going to the opposite side, so I'm coming out the bottom of the halo in the six millimeter. I'm gonna go into the top of the halo in the six millimeter round and come out the bottom. Now, Jenny, when you do yours, do you do more than one thread pass? With the KO, I did two because of the density of it. That it was really thin? Yeah. So with the wildfire, I did one on mine, and I'm gonna stick to the like, one. Yeah, it looks like it'll be fine with just the one. Yeah, so the wildfire I did one, it was good to go. What we're talking about is that you take it through again so that on each side of the bead or on side of the halo, you'd have two threads rather than one. It just stiffens it up a little bit, so you can do that, especially if you're using a smaller or thinner beads as well, too. Oh, I do recognize the snakeskin. They are snakeskin beads. I think you guys gave snakeskins in a box too, didn't you? Um, I think there were snakeskins in a box a couple months ago. Possibly, I maybe. Looked back yeah. at those. Maybe they were there. So, all right. But anything can work for this. So I'm gonna start out my first row with my 11 OC beads. So we have our thread on either side of our bead and we are going to do 16 11 OC beads. How do I know that number? because I tried it. 
So <laughs> there's no rocket science of how many beads are going to sit along that outer edge. Do you want to actually count yours around your eight? How many of your first row do you have? As you count. So Jenny's counting. Do, 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 do. And while Jenny counts, I'm going to pick up two 11 OC beads. I'm going underneath the thread here that runs right along the side of the halo. So two beads, two to start. Two beads underneath the thread, the side thread of the halo, pulling the thread the whole way through it. Those beads are going to lay on the side there. I'm going to sew back up through the second bead. And that is going to sit those beads kind of right on the edge like that, right on the side. Do not pull too tightly. When it comes to circular brick stitch, that's one of the hardest things to learn is not to pull too tight. I'm going to pick up one more bead. Again, sewing underneath that thread that we put along the exterior of the bead. And I'm going to repeat this. For mine, it was 16 for this 6 millimeter bead. However, with the halo, it makes it a little bit more. How many do you got? 15. 15. So Jenny has 15 on the sides of hers. So I'm going because the halo makes it a little bit bigger. And all you're going to do if you know brick stitch, you pick up a bead, you sew underneath what is called the bridge thread normally between the beads. And it's hard to see there, but you can see that little bit of green poking on the top down, through, make sure when you sew back up through the bead that you're not accidentally sewing underneath that bridge thread again. You do that one bead on and away you go. So there you have on four beads and you're going to continue just adding them till you get about 16 of them. Maybe a little glue. So Carla, if you do want to use a little glue, don't use it now wait till you're done like when you're completely done with it then you could go in and use, use a little bit of glue because what's going to happen is uh, you're not going to be able to pick up your thread to glue through and sometimes you end up gluing the beads shut and you do end up gluing the beads. <laughs> you learn that the hard way is when your glue tube explodes and uh, you end up gluing your beads shut so you're just going to continue the whole way along the one side basically adding your beads sewing up putting a bead on sewing underneath that little thread that's running along the side of the beads if you, do three, if you do two passes of thread rather than one along the sides, it actually almost makes it easier because you have more to kind of go underneath and stiffen up. So you could do two threads along the side. I'm going through here and I'm on to bead number, what am I on, seven? Bead number seven. And of course I got a little bit of a knot in there. Pull that out. If you see a knot starting, a suggestion and word of advice is don't pull tightly let it go and try to pull the knot out before you try to pull the thread. So I'm on seven and then eight, which is going to be about halfway because remember I counted 16 total. When I am halfway here and I'm doing that eighth one, what you want to do when you get to the point of the bottom, because there's no thread basically right here next to that stop bead, pull your stop bead out a little bit. We're going to jump over the hole. So I'm going to use one more bead and then I'm jumping over the hole and I'm going to sew through the thread on the other side. Move that stop bead out of the way, push it to the back just so you don't sew through it and there you get that one on there. Do, 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 do. Stop bead wants to be in my project. Get out of there stop bead and thread. Feel free to read any questions or comments Jenny. Okay. And then as I go through then that branches and gets from one side of the bead to the other one. Uh, suggestions if one doesn't have a halo bead, don't use anything. Just the round bead is real pretty. Yep, so Jenny has, throw yours back into view here. So here's just an eight millimeter round bead, is that you have just the round bead there and you don't even need to have the thread along the sides. So I'm going to kind of off screen a little bit as you're taking a look at those and getting the pattern idea. Also, I'm using 11 OC beads, but nothing says you have to start with 11s. You can start with 15s, you can start with 8s, you can start with 6s. Brick stitch is super forgiving. You can start with anything. And if you have the part, you can see right there my thread is kind of going towards the top of the design. Just take your needle and thread and pull it outward. As you add your seed beads, it really sticks to the outside of it. I don't really have a problem with that one kind of floating in or out. And then to add again to um, Carla, if you do want to, that's where you glue after the fact. So I'm continuing to sew underneath. I think I'm on bead number 10 maybe. Now the trick with brick stitch that you learn also the hard way is not to pull, put too many beads in. If you put too many beads in, you get what I call like potato chippy. 
that there's too many beads trying to fit into one little space and they don't actually fit in there. Pucker. They pucker, yeah. Okay, so I'm pulling tight. And then after each one, too, when you pull your thread, don't pull your needle to tighten up your thread. Pull, like I'm pulling my needle across me and then I'm coming down and I'm holding my thread. That way you're not putting a lot of tension on the thread right where it goes through the needle. So around and around I go. Where I stop, no one knows. Okay. And let's see. Would other shape halo beads work too for a little different effect? Totally. So you could do a halo diamond. Um, do I have any sitting in there? Um, oh, to gain up. I don't think in the bag. Oh, oh, I have the bracelet, duh. So yeah, there might be some, some in there. Loose ones here. Get some loose guys there. Jenny's gathering some out so you guys can see it. So I have the 11 -0 here on. This is my last 11 -0 seed bead. I'm coming back up through the top. Brick stitch is so versatile. So there I'm coming back up through the top. When I come here back to bead number one, so I'm on bead number 16 coming out of there, and I'm going back to bead number one. Remember if you use an eight, your count might be different. If you're using like a regular six millimeter, your count's different. Don't try to squeeze extra beads in there. Mm -hmm. It's better to have a little, a little bit of less. gap. Don't make it pucker. All right, so I'm coming out of the top of bead number 16, and I'm gonna go down into bead number one. What that's gonna do is create that little thread arch from one to the other. It's also gonna make bead number one sit correctly. From there, I'm gonna sew underneath the bridge thread, right there, make sure I'm underneath it. And then I'm gonna sew back up, I'm rotating in my hand, I'm gonna sew back up through bead number one. Uh, one of the questions was about the needle. Allie's using a size 12. Size 12 needle, and I'm using the Pony brand needle. So here is, so here's an idea, like you can stop. With Brick Stitch, you can stop at any point. So when you're looking at it, you can stop with the brick stitch and say, yeah, I'm, I'm down and done with it. One thing I was going to show, and Jenny could probably play around with this. I messed up the stitch. question. They asked if it was if 10 or 12 is smaller and the 12 is smaller. 12 is smaller, so it's going to be like a sewing or like wire too, wire gauges. So here on the outside of the diamond duo, you could totally do the same thing. So I'm going to keep it empty just for effect, but you could take your thread from one hole to the other, then you could take your thread around the top and back to here, back here, and basically all you need to do is make your, whoops, make your thread stay along that outer edge. So you can have the thread go the whole way around from side to side and do brick stitch all the way around the design. It's probably going to be so, a little harder than a round one. It is going to be a little bit harder, but it's totally doable. Um, oval will work too. You just have to think about um, all the different shapes and I mean when you're a kid the easiest thing to like bounce or control is a round ball. Same thing <laughs> idea with and still those of you that can't play ball sports I struggle with that. <laughs> My hand-eye coordination for beating works for ball sport playing it doesn't that's why I was a runner because they just said go that way and I said I can do that. <laughs> Kick that ball? No. I'm not even good at kickball honestly. <laughs> I'm terrible at like the easiest ball sport. Alright so I'm done my first row of my brick stitch and I want to go to my second row of my brick stitch. So in her design Jenny did a row of 15s in hers so I thought I'll stick with Jenny's design. I did a row of 15s in mine too. I'm gonna pick up now some galvanized gold 15 ounce and pour out a little pile of those too. Same deal I'm at this start of the bracelet and I'm gonna use two beads again. So those two beads go on, and what I'm gonna do is skip over from this first bridge thread. So I'm gonna start saying bridge threads. The bridge threads are basically the hump of thread that goes from the top of one bead to the top of an X bead. So they're the connector thread, those are the bridge threads. They act like a bridge, hence the bridge thread, going from one bead to another. The tricky thing is we're not using the exact same size. So if we go from an 11 to a 15, 11 to an 8, you might get one bead per bridge thread right here because naturally it's going to get bigger as it goes bigger. So although I had 16 beads on my inner row, if I want to do 11 O's again, I'm probably going to end up with like 17 or 18. Mm -hmm. Like so one extra bead one if I want them to sit. So you're going to think about the fact that it's not necessarily one bead 
per bridge thread, you're going to actually go kind of every other. So I have my first bridge thread there from the bead one that I'm coming out of the top of to bead two. I'm going to go over to the bridge thread from bead two to bead three. Uh, one of the people mentioned Maru in Japan that it, that it reminds them of that, and I have some beads from there. Fun. Yeah. And then, okay, so what you're going to do then is go through and create, again, I did two beads at a time. I sewed back up through bead number two after going and sewing under that bridge thread. Now, you're going to notice when I pull this, I'm not going to pull super tight because I want that first bead to lay down nicely as I go back and create that circle. This bead that's here, you'll notice, hey, there's still room on that same bridge thread. With the 15s, it's almost going to be in every other pattern. So this bridge thread is going to have two beads that go through and underneath that same bridge thread. The next one is just going to have one. Then I'm going to have two. Then I'm going to have one. So that bead goes on, and the bead goes on and on and on. There goes another one. Now I'm over to bridge thread number four. I'm going one through number four, putting a bead on, sewing underneath, going back up through that bead. Now as I go through here, now I don't need another bead in there. I don't have space for it. So when I put on my next bead, I'm going to skip over to the next bridge thread. When I force this bead into place, I'm going to have room after this bead to go in and actually do another bead in that same bridge thread area. So I think I'm on bead number five. And now you can see I can't really go over to this area here because I have a lot of space still. So here's a second bead going underneath the same bridge thread, underneath here, and then back up through. I can remember Jenny teaching my first class on this mm -hmm. like a long time ago. And I feel like it's just one of those eye-opener things where people are like, oh, yeah. <laughs> now I yeah. get it. It's like one of those eye-opener classes where you're like, Oh, this is the same thing as crocheting, mm -hmm. basically. I was going to say that like, my it, brain compares those two also. To, to crocheting, and you're just going in and you're like, when people are like, oh, I did one per bridge thread, you're like, that's great if you want to do that and have them more spaced out, but make sure that you're not going to pull too tightly. So if you do want to have more of a gap, so in Jenny's piece below, you have a little bit more of a tightness with her four millimeter melons. I did them a little bit further apart. So my bridge thread along the top here is a little bit longer than her bridge thread here. So you can do things smaller or bigger, wider apart or smaller apart. Nothing says I need to put these beads right next to one another. I can leave some gap, I can leave some space, and I have seen some incredible brick stitch where that's actually the case, where they leave space in between and that way it's almost like a gear, it looks, uh, has that space. So what I would do is leave that and then look, I have that space in there with that thread underneath that as I'm looking at it, I have the thread gapping and I just want to try to be consistent as possible and make sure that gaps. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it tight and move it over a little bit because I'm not doing that pattern. But you can, it's pretty easy. And it's also pretty easy to back out of these if you decide you have too many or too few. Yeah, that you can take one off. And you sometimes won't know that until you go back to that bead number one. And you're like, oh man, bead number 16 needs mm -hmm. to come off. Cool. And then you just kind of give the beads a little massage with your fingers. Also, another note with the fun, um, with the fun idea of the brick stitch. Nothing says I need to keep going around in the circle. If I want to, I could make this look like a peacock and just keep building up from the top and building up from the top and have it almost be a peacock. Actually, I might need to do that. That would be cool. Um, just up from one angle and basically just stopping with that. But I'm just working my way around every other bridge thread. I do two beads underneath the same thread, one bead at a time, but I go underneath that same thread two different times. And then the, the Denise said she wishes she had the four millimeter melons. We have some really cute colors of those right now too. Yeah, there's a bunch of those different um, melon options. They do give a fun texture. So when we first got the melons in, I was like, oh man, they like look like they didn't get <laughs> cut all the way. Yeah. And then the more I started working with them, I'm like, oh, they're really, really fun. They add a lot of texture. That's honestly why I decided to go with the snake finish on the check rounds because the snake finish gives that same kind of texture. Mm -hmm. You could also use crystals too. You want to go blingy, mm -hmm. go blingy, go home. You can use crystals in the same fashion. So, 
All right. Jenny, lovely earrings you're wearing. Thank says you. Says Potomac Beads. Somebody says. <laughs> somebody wants somebody, <laughs> somebody says lovely Potomac Bead earrings. Little faces. What did Anna say to you today, Jenny? Uh, when you had your faces on? Three heads are better than one. Three heads are better than one, Jenny. There you go. I don't know if you can see them. You got your little heads on there. Okay. So my beads are going on. I just did two on the last brick stitch. I'm going to power through this because you can always watch this slower. One thing that I think people do not realize. Um, YouTube has a lot of settings. So if you want to go in and change your settings, uh, I actually found this out through my daughter. She's better at it than I am. You can change it to, oh, you just want to see them whip through. You can change it like to 2.5 speed. You can change oh. it to 1.5. I didn't you know do that, that under the little, you can't do it on a live. You can't make us go faster or go slower. <laughs> um, but if you have it recorded, you can go underneath the video to the little gear for the settings, and you can slow me down. I know I talk fast. Jenny was nervous coming over, and I said, don't worry, I talk a lot, I talk fast. You just have to sit here and look pretty. Come on over and offer your words of advice. So Jenny, just out of curiosity too, um, and thinking about this, I should have asked Anna. A lot of times the end of bead, I'm getting myself a knot the wrong way. Wrong way. Um, a lot of times the end of bead embroidery pieces will also have brick stitch along that exterior mm -hmm. edge. And then do you ever do anything with your leather working that you've added beads to the exterior of a brick stitch? Um, if not, you should. Yeah, I should. No, I have done some embroidery pieces right onto suede, nice. but not around the edges. Yeah, because the brick stitch is a great ending too if you do a lot of uh, bead embroidery because it gives, again, just that nice outer stitch. Now, if this was my last go around, if I wanted to end after this section, one thing that you can do to add a little bit is add two beads at a time. I'll show you that when I get to this green, but what that would do is just decorate it a little bit that you don't see that exterior thread. You could also use Charlotte's, which are super tiny 15 OC beads. You could use the Charlotte's on the outer edge too. So instead of picking up one seed bead at a time, I would pick up two and that bead would then just sit right at where the bridge thread is. And that way it just kind of decorates the exterior so you don't see the thread. You can do that in between the rows as well, but uh, it looks good for the final row or the final stitch. And we're gonna keep going here. Around and around I go. So I'm just going in and going the whole way around this brick stitch. So in a normal video, this is kind of the fun of the live. I'm actually creating this whole live. In a normal video, I would say, and now you do this 22 more times and then you'd be done. You get to actually see the kind of slower speed of my fast speed that I do. And you'll notice as you do brick stitch or really any stitch, as your thread gets shorter, you get way faster because it's less to pull through. Less times to knot. Less times to <laughs> knot all your thread. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So here I am that I'm kind of back towards the start. And what I'm going to check on at this point is if I lay that first bead down, am I done or do I normally need to add one more bead? So you can see I have a pretty big gap here. If I pull that though, am I done if I lay that bead down? If I put another bead in there, am I going to have room? So it's kind of a gamble whether or not you want to go. Mm -hmm. In my mind, <laughs> in my mind, I'm done. Because when I push this bead over a little bit, I'm going to, let me see. So this is where Jenny was saying it's really easy to back out. I actually do think I have a little bit too much of a gap and I'm going to need one more. Because over here, if I do this and pull it here, it's going to create a little bit more of a gap on between bead one and two. So I am going to add one last 15 out. And so in through that first bead. All right, then here is that ending point again. So when you go in here, and I'm getting ready to end, I'm, I'm connecting my first bead to, I probably have like 20 beads on here. You're gonna sew down through, so you're out of bead number 20, sewing down through bead number one. And you're creating that bridge gap, which you're then gonna use as you do your next pattern. Now you can see it's sitting just a tiny bit tight right there. Go ahead and just, like I said, just kind of massage the beads towards the outer row. I'm going to sew underneath the bridge thread between those two 11 O's. That's how I know I'm underneath. And then back up through bead number one. And you'll notice when I do this, I switch my hands a lot. 
like which way I'm holding the piece, whichever way is easier. That's not my favorite part. Hello to Marissa as well. <laughs> I said we're on the same beading weave that you had posted that you're doing a circular brick stitch as well. Allie, despite having to show the full round, you're still really fast beater. So must still have good eyes. My eyes will fail me and I know that. I've already made like a contingency plan for when my arthritis yeah. starts to happen and when I start to lose my sight. It's okay, I'm just gonna start playing all those 2000 videos over again. There. I'm gonna start yeah. at the beginning and go back through. And why so, is Allie using all pony beads? Why, why, is, why is Allie using all six O's and two O's C beads now too? Um, so we're going, uh, what are we, 14, 14 years strong here on this bead venture. I can still see, so that's good. Uh, but again, after the fact, you can slow us down to 2.5 <laughs> speed. Um, so, or you can speed me up if you want to hear me talk really, really, really fast. I know I so quickly. I don't want to have to have you guys watch this for like an hour to go with it. So I didn't force more seed beads than I need to. And that's like definitely like brick stitch lesson number one. If it don't fit, don't force it. Don't force it if it don't fit. All right, so here's what I was talking about where Jenny did hers tighter and then I did mine a little bit looser. I ended up, how many did you end up with? Because we're about the same size, even though I used the halo in the six. Yeah. I have 12. You want to you wanna count yours? Okay, this is like a me versus maybe everybody else. I have to hold the bead I start with because talking about that spring chicken, I can never remember, did I count the Wait, bead I'm I holding? Did I, I count know. the bead I'm holding or not? I have 12 around mine, so I'm assuming you probably have 13. You got one more in there. Mm -hmm. You got one more. So the difference between 13 and 12 beads, about the same size interior, hers is just a tiny bit bigger. You can see how much more spaced out just leaving that one bead off. And naturally mine looks bigger then because I did an extra row of seed beads along the outer side. So coming out the exterior here, I'm gonna get my hemlock. So these are the snake hemlock rounds. I think also with this one, I went through each of the melon sets twice because of the KO thread opposed, as opposed to the wildfire. Yeah, KO is awesome. Like if you want to do fringe earrings and you want to do like long drops, and especially those people that do the patterns of them, I love them. So if you're a pattern person and you do like the nice swaying flowy earrings with the pattern, KO threads your thread. You're golden with that. If you're doing something brick stitch, I actually like the stiffer thread because it holds them better, a little bit yeah, stiffer. Definitely. All right, so even like I do with the smaller beads, I'm gonna start out this row with two beads. So I've got two of my fours on, and now you have to play the backwards game. So we were playing that, we had every other, we were putting one bead per bridge thread versus two, one, two, one. Now I'm playing the, all right, I gotta skip over, I think I did every other. So here's one, I'm going to bridge thread number two. I'm going to number three because I have two beads on. And the bummer with this is with earrings, you need to make one match the other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so you gotta make sure they semi-match. All right, and actually that's a little bit too far, so my fault, go back to number two. So I'm gonna sew underneath that bridge thread, pop that out, come back one more and make it fit. All right, that's gonna make them sit a little bit nicer. Now notice how they sit cockeyed up a little bit. I wanna make sure, because there is gonna be more of a gap, when I go back up through bead two, I do not wanna to pull too tightly, because otherwise I'm never going to be able to get that bead number one to sit nicely on its surface. So I'm pulling tight, but not super tight to make it lay on its side. So you'll notice I have that gap there. I'm gonna add one more of my four millimeter rounds, skip the next bridge thread and go to the next one in line. This is pretty also with gemstones. Yeah, beautiful. Actually, the uh, gemstones that are sitting there, this would look lovely. Mm -hmm. Those are the Amazonite faceted two millimeter rounds. So again, here, as I'm going in, when I add these older or those bigger beads, hold them in place as you pull your thread and that way it doesn't pull them too tight. I want that thread gap and that bridge thread to match distance wise. The nicer you have them matching on the exterior, the nicer your project's gonna become. So naturally they wanna lay down. You're gonna, after you go under your bridge thread and sew back up, you're gonna kinda pull them so they're sitting facing forward. Now, this is again that word to the wise on the brick stitch. 
don't pull too tight because then, again, what do you call it? I call it a potato chippy. Uh, pucker. Pucker. It you turns get, into a bowl. You get a, It does turn into a bowl. <laughs> you could do a whole nice bowl, a too. Bowl. If you want, a whole bowl, if you pull it tightly enough, they're all going to fall forward. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of that natural, take a risk, try it out. If it starts to pucker, brick stitch is actually pretty easy to get out. So like Jenny said, take it apart. Don't be unhappy with your project. Take it apart. It's not that much more to do. If you get those rows on the interior under control and figure it out first, that sets the mark for it. So hopefully you'll be able to do this for many more years. I hope so too. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. My kids, I said, if I'm not in jail for killing my kids, I'll keep eating. <laughs> <laughs> for the, I love my kids, but this quarantine is uh, extra special. So I was talking to uh, our cousin, and she's like, I can't handle it anymore, Rachel. She, was like, she used to work with us. And she's like, I can't handle it anymore. I'm going crazy. Can't I was like, get yeah, away from I know. Them. Can't get away from them. And she's a normal homeschooler, so it's even worse, you know. <laughs> but going in here, then I'm skipping bridge thread number one, going into number two, and adding my four. So mm -mm -mm -mm. I can't hit the replay button on projects. Um, and have them self-assemble. I know, wouldn't that be great if you could just be like, mm -hmm. and go. Mm -hmm. All right. And you can see I'm leaving that gap and I am not pulling tightly. So I'm letting that thread arch all along the design. And I'm trying to make sure as I do that, that it's sitting flat and that it's not pulled too tight. I don't want it to pucker. I want it to be nice and flat like a wafer. So. Enjoying the class and the beads are on the way. Yay! So, but the ginkgo beads would look good as the border. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can use any shape of beads. So I was playing around with uh, cubes. I love cubes, actually, in circular brick stitch because they're like that unexpected little mm -hmm. thing that we could add. You literally can add anything. And it's fun to see what you can get away with putting in the yeah. middle. <laughs> and what in can there. I put in the middle? <laughs> if you only have like a special, you know everybody has them. I have this like stockpile of gemstones at my house that I'm keeping for something. I don't know what I'm keeping them for, <laughs> but I'm keeping them for Just something. Just to look at them sometimes. Just to look at them and pet them. Those high-end gemstones mm -hmm. and you're like, what do you do with those? I was like, I don't know, but Sometimes I just look at them and pet them. <laughs> Maybe one of them will go into the interior of a brick stitch. And if you only have one bead, keep in mind, make a pendant. Like, you can just do that one bead. So somebody wants to know, uh, what is that big bead? So there you go, what is that big bead? Oh, the, um, the eight millimeter is a cotton pearl. Those are really cool because they have a finish like a pearl, but the weight is non-existent yeah like literally, cotton, literally cotton literally non-existent so it's mm -hmm. a spun cotton Anna was describing them earlier which I thought was pretty good as like cotton candy like mm -hmm. that's basically what you can think of it as and without the, the nauseating effect yeah. oh I love cotton candy <laughs> oh I can't do it I can't do it <laughs> and the colors are really soft and they're nice to work with and the hole is rather large so you don't have a problem when you're threading through them and then the ones that I'm using are a six millimeter faceted check glass round inside of one of the halo beads and I can't not work with halos and not sing Beyonce a little bit. I can see a halo, <laughs> halo. <laughs> so you can see my halo right there, mm -hmm. hey-o. All right, so I'm getting my four millimeter on. And again, just as you go around, make sure not to pull too tight because you don't want a bowl. You want a nice disc. Or if you do want a bowl, then pull tight. We'll see how accurate I am with my 12 count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's every other, so if you happen to do, uh, so I know I had 24 of my gold beads on, or 25, because I had 24 thread thread gaps. And, then, and now you'll notice they are bending a little bit. That's fine when I get the next row of my seed beads on and show you how to do that little exterior edge. It's gonna keep it from doing it. So now, did I have one more? Was that 10? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So this is my last of my four millimeter check round bead. And I'm gonna go into that second one there. I'm going down into there. Do, 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 do. Back up just as if I was getting ready to be done. And then this is a good, if you haven't really gotten the whole, go back down through bead number one, you'll be able to see it really well here. That's why I said to Jenny when she made this, I was like, oh, I'll teach that as a class because it helps people see the difference of what they're working with. So now I'm coming out of bead number 12. I'm going back into bead number one. So back down bead number one. Again, not pulling too tightly. 
I'm going to sew through that bridge thread. How do you know it's the bridge thread? You kind of just poke your needle between two beads and hope you hit it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, you do, if you don't hit it, try again. Your needle will go right through. I think I hit it. And then you go back up through. So there's a science in everything, but, you know, might not be. When I, was, I did that with this one a good bit because at my house, the light is not like this. So it's like I... You're not sitting you under tons it. of fluorescent lights, Jenny, <laughs> with the halo light in front of you to make your eyes sparkle, to show extra well that I really, really need to get to a hair salon. Oh, my God, I do. And uh, at least with the blonde, you can't see as many grays, so I'm good. But, okay, so there's my exterior for the four millimeters. Now I can keep this open. Again, looks beautiful, any stopping point that you wanna do. So now here's where I did tricky, and I'm gonna have you, Jenny, verbally explain how you did your extra fringe on the outside. So how did you do um, yours? No, what I did was... Um, Went up through... Yeah. A bead and down. I probably and did you started, through? Yes, and I probably started at the top there where mm -hmm. the part would connect to your necklace or your ear wire. So I knew that I would have that. Did you go down the through the 11 O, 15 OC beads, or no, you just, just went right over? So with her KO, you didn't see it at all. So my problem was I was afraid if I went across that it would hide my gold beads a little bit. So I thought, how can I do the same thing but do it a little bit differently? So the way that I started out doing it was I grabbed my two beads, so just like I'm doing my next row, and you have to be a little bit careful here not to pull too tight. I'm going underneath the bridge thread, and guess what? If you haven't been able to see the bridge thread before, now you can really see it. Here's the annoyance of having a big bridge thread. You've got to keep your beads to the other side of the bridge thread. So you need to kind of pinch it there, make sure they stay to the opposite side. I'm going back up through bead number one, or sorry, bead number two, and I'm going to get them to lay right along the extra edge. I'm not pulling super tight. I just want that bead in place because I don't want to pull my thread too much. I'm going to add my next bead going underneath my bridge thread. And you can see how I'm pinching there so the bead stays to that side of the bridge thread. And I go back up through the 15 0 And I pulled. Now, when I'm on right in front of my big bead, what I did is I added one of my green beads to sit on top of the green bead, the uh, check bead, and then another one of my 15s. Skip over the top of the bead. Again, kind of push up so that way the beads stay on that side of the bridge thread and then go back up through bead 15. So I'm not going into that 11O at all. All the 11O is doing is just decorating the exterior. So it just sits just as a little color pop on the exterior. I did that. Yeah, thanks. And then you go in here, <laughs> add my one bead. So I go, I just went back through one bead after the 11O. Then I add another 15O. There's one, two 15Os. I'm gonna add a third 15O. So three 15 O's I added between each of my four millimeter beads. And then after I go through and add doo -doo 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 -doo, my third, then I go in and I add an 11 and my 15. Add my 11 and my 15, scoot over to the next bridge thread. Um, somebody asked if the um, pendant comes in a kit. Um, it comes in your bead box. It, but it's just the extra, it's the extra materials and some of the things left over from the tea time bracelet and the Zoli Duo the, band, the pendant. band pendant. So right now, we always play catch up getting the box or getting the uh, designs to go with an actual like kit or something like that. So we work on a lot of them. So if you want it to be a kit, uh, let us know because we will kind of make that kit hopefully happen. So in here again, I'm going in then after I add my 11 and my 15, sewing underneath. I have two more 11s to add, one. And you can see as I go through the exterior, I'm just adding quickly because you should hopefully get brick stitch by now. If not, I have failed you. <laughs> and you're going back up through. I get my three on there, make sure it's not puckering. Just kind of let it relax and lay down. Grab my 11, oops. Grab my 11, again, grab my 15, and then jump over, over top of the bridge thread to the next one after the four millimeter. And I love so that. So back up through Sorry. 15. Oh, go for it. I love that brick stitch earring that Bridget did, I guess, last week. Yeah, she did brick stitch. We're on a brick stitch kit. Mm -hmm. So she did a brick stitch earring totally separate. So her brick stitch that she did, she did it as flat brick stitch. We're doing circular. So circular is going to be different than tubular brick stitch 
which I don't honestly know why you would ever do tubular brick stitch because I would just do tubular peyote because mm -hmm. um, you're getting that same design. It would be really stiff. Brick mm -hmm. stitch tends to be a lot stiffer uh, when it comes to most things. It's going to feel soft right now because I have a lot of this thread going on at the top. But then after that one, you just continue on and go. Now what I'm going to do, see how that bead popped over to the other side? Push it back to the starter side and then go up through here. When I go up through here and I add it, we need to get to a point where I say, oh, I need to actually add in my daggers. So when I get to this next point, I will start adding in my daggers. Actually, I'll add my daggers, I'll try to do it nicely, on these three bottom beads here. So that way, my whole of my bead kind of lines up. So I have two more that I need to go, and then I'll add them. So going one, two, this is my third bead in between my beads on the exterior. Give a nice little pull, and then I add my 11 and my 15, and jump over to the next one. And if you don't want to do that, and you don't want to have that color on the outside, you don't need to. You could do like Jenny did, and just sew down one bead, add a couple beads, come out the other. This takes more time because you're adding that final thread count to the edge. And let's see, so this next one I'm going to do my first fringe drop. So there's my one, two 15s going out through the top, and then three. Now keep in mind too, this is always available to watch after the fault. Oh, thank you so much. He said, I never fail with my teaching. <laughs> there are some days where it just doesn't click. <laughs> I had a couple weeks ago, I'm not gonna lie, where I was like, yeah, I'm done. I'm not gonna go on Twitch. I was just, nothing's connecting in my head. I think I had had it with my kids. That was the point where I wanted to kill them. Um, all right, so now I'm at the bottom here and I'm gonna add some of my daggers in. Again, if you want to, you can add them in the middle of the stitch. You could, oh, that would be really pretty too, mm -hmm. putting them up there. So you can change up how you do it. I'm gonna make mine match so my earrings don't look different. Although I find that the older I get, the more I'm like, huh, you know, different. Anita wasn't so bad after all. When she's like, hello, if you wear two different earrings, they know you're crazy rather than just thinking maybe you're a little off. If you wear two different earrings or just one, then people know you're crazy. So Get make it work. It. All right, so there I have my dagger along with, and this is a one whole dagger in Aztec gold. I have my 11-0 on, then my dagger, then an 11-0. At the same time, I need to put a 15-0 on. Because you're thinking that instead of just adding one 11-0, you're adding one 11-0, but then also a dagger and another 11-0. The 15-0 gets added on. And then the same deal. You're skipping over top of the next four millimeter into here. Ba -ba -ba. Flip your dagger. And then sew back up through your 15-0, if it'll let me. Come on. And with mine, I believe that since I did these where you just come out of the beads, um, with the dagger, I just did the same thing where I popped back down, put the beads on, and then popped back up through. So for these guys here, you popped down with the 15, went through the dagger, added another 15, and then back went through the O-bead. I actually really like how the O-beads, had I thought about it, I would have actually added an O-bead here, too. I like the look of the O-beads. Almost like a little cap again little at the cap. bottom. little cap, yeah. And then, so here I'm coming out of this brick stitch one. I have the dagger on. I have then to do my two 15s yet still. My one, back up through. Come on, get to the other side, you dagger. 15, talking to my beads. I regularly talk to my beads. <laughs> I don't have a cat in the recording studio, so I have to talk to my beads. <laughs> All right, my 15 goes on up here. All right, now I'm to that point again. So I have my three 15s in between, making sure I'm right, yep. My three 15s in between. And then to make the dagger hang just a little bit longer, the next one I did 11, 15, 11. So I do 11, 15, 11, dagger, and then the same thing, 11, 15, 11. And then I have to put on, in order to connect it, I need to use another one of my 15s. Again, just like I was doing. And this time now I have to awkwardly hold it as I sew underneath the bridge thread. Pinch that there. I know it's kind of hiding it from your fingers, but I need that 15 to stay on that side. And then go back up through that last 15. Kathy said thank you. You're welcome, Kathy. You what am her? I saying, Jeff? Kathy so said... Nice. 
Thank you. A little late, missed it, but I always appreciate everything you do. Thank you so much. Yeah, you can go in after the fact and watch this again and, and slow me down, too. And for those of you just joining in, this is Jenny. Jenny's been a, been a beater for 15 years. Mm -hmm. You beat it before you started. Yeah. Uh, beat her, <laughs> beat her, beat her before you beat it out of started out of convenience probably because you had a bead store in town. Mm -hmm. So you got a 15 on there. You go underneath the bridge thread, back up through, uh, back up through, and any of your concerns about the bead box or any of the materials. So Jenny's example that's laying here. This is actually a design made with the contents from the May Best Bead Box. So if you got the May Best Bead Box. All of the contents to do this are in there. Also, if you got the April Best Bead Box, all of the contents are available in there to do this. There were some pretty purple check glass beads that went uh, in that one that would look really pretty as well. And somebody asked about the needle, mm -hmm. um, and Ali said she uses a number tw is using a number twelve English beading needle. I used a number ten tulip needle, which also worked, which probably was easier to thread. <laughs> Yeah, the tulip needles are a little bit easier to thread. They have a bigger eye. So there goes on an 11. Here goes on a 15. Da, 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 da. A combo of them would be pretty. You're right. A combo of some of these two different materials would look pretty. And I love um, Tessa, one of our coworkers that moved down to Texas. Um, that's no longer with us because she moved to Texas. Um, she had an amazing brick stitch bracelet that I always used to like love to look at. And I think she cost, yeah, it was all different spots all along it, all different beads lined up together mm -hmm. like this, just attached one another and it made the most beautiful cuff. She used to watch, wear it all the time when she taught the brick stitch class to show people like, you can do so much more with it. And when you get the kit and you have all of those random little like maybe 20 seed beads, that this is a really good this thing is, for This is, yeah, ideal for that. So there I have my next drop on, again I did that. 11, the dagger, my 11, my 15, and then went back through the 15. And then it's just business as normal. So I'm going back up to the top to make my bail. And you can do the bail at the top, your loop, depending on how you're attaching it. You can do it with um, seed beads. You can do it with a wire guard or a wire protector as well. Do, 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 do. Okay. So going in here, I finished out then my three seed beads in between. So we've been adding those three seed beads in between. And then if you just caught up how I'm doing that little green seed bead dash fringe on top is I'm adding one of my 15s, or sorry, one of my 11s and then one of my 15s. Go over top of that check glass. Basically, you're jumping right over top to the next bridge thread, that thread that connects those two beads laying on their sides. Go back up through the 15 which mine is twisted, and I don't want it to be twisted. So just make it relax, and then back up through. So all I have to do now is go through to the top, and I'm gonna power bead right now. I'm gonna power bead to the top so I can finish. I wore black just so I could wear my earrings once they're done. Mm -hmm. I realize I don't have any ear wires, but I have wires, so we're gonna make that happen, that I can make it, make it work. And I'm gonna power bead here for the next couple minutes so I can show you the top. Yeah. Actually, we were talking earlier about one of our coworkers slash cousin, one of my cousins, Rachel, actually Nathan's cousin, and she came in the other day to work uh, for the first time in years just because she's like, we're quarantining with my in-laws, <laughs> and I just needed a break, and I have nowhere to go, so I figured I'd come work with you, so it sounds good. Come on in. Make some grab bags. Okay. Going back through here, powering through it. I'm just going right up along, doing these beads. Again, when I get to my three on in between each bead, and I know after that third bead in between, and yours might be different. If you do it tight like Jenny's, you might have two C beads, or you could do 15, or just 11s on the exterior. You don't need to do 15s. 15s, obviously, are going to take a little bit longer because they're smaller, so you have that. Please do this as a kit for earrings and show the different colorways, although I like this colorway a lot. Well, thanks. We will definitely uh, make Diana crazy and tell her, we have another kit. Oh, <laughs> we have she... another kit design. <laughs> is she the one that puts She's the together? one that stacks them. So Cheryl's kind of our kit maker extraordinaire. Oh, okay. I cannot get, I got Cheryl on once. 
I cannot get Cheryl on camera. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have some new male employees, too, and I'm like, ooh, it's only moments till I get <laughs> Zach out back here on uh, there. Take a step back away from our bagging machine and come on back. All right, so I'm in my third here. I'm almost to my top. I'm on my last seed bead where I have that, and I need to refresh myself how I did my top. Okay, one more bead here. And I was going to do a different colorway for this, and then I decided, nah, I want a pair of earrings. Mm -hmm. I selfishly want these pair of <laughs> lapises kind of, or the uh, malachite style earrings. And they do really, the more I look at them, the more I'm like, oh, they do really remind me of malachite. Mm -hmm. And I usually yeah, don't do. like malachite, surprisingly. I find when you, you either like malachite or you like turquoise, I think. I'm usually a turquoise oh, yeah. girl, but I, uh, I do like this malachite. Mm -hmm. Look. All right, and don't limit yourself to just glass beads for brick stitch. They look gorgeous with CB, with uh, gemstones too. All right, so here's that last bead that I'm adding on. When I get to the top, which if you're at the top, you should be able to draw the line down to that bottom dagger and be like, yep, I'm right across from it. So I'm down here from the dagger, I'm right here across from the dagger. I'm getting ready to do my loop as I'm working with it. When I'm out of this loop here, what I'm going to do is just loop up some seed beads. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. I had to refresh my memory. So I'm doing ten beads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So I'm going to let those ten seed beads drop. And then skip over to the next bead, number one. So I'm coming out of basically the last bead in my brick stitch. And I got a knot. Come down. Make that loop happen. And then along the bottom of the loop, and you can use a wire guard here if you know it's going to be an earring. I wasn't sure exactly what it was going to be, so I wanted my loop to be a decent size. When I come back there, I'm coming down through bead one. I'm going back up through whatever bead this is, say bead 40, the last bead. It's more like bead 60, but going back through then, and I'm going to reinforce that loop just to make literally a loop. Somebody asked um, how you would attach the daggers when you had them scrunched together. So if you would attach three, so what you can do, and then I'll curve that open a little bit, and there my earrings are finished. I will put them on and model them. So what you could do when you're down here as the dagger, so say you want to group these up, instead of doing it as one, you could put literally three on there and then just skip along the line where you'll see a little bit of thread or it doesn't really matter. You can also go back through the beads. So say I wanted to come in and wanted to add something, I could start a thread here on Jenny's, come down to this bead and I can always add on the fact after. I can come back around to the brick stitch, add something else on. But the way that I see it that I would do it is do the middle one just like it is, but prior to the middle one, after one of the 15 O's there in the middle, drop an 11-0 on, split it like Jenny did, where you then drop a 15-0 on, go through the dagger 15-0 back, and then go back through the 15-0 so it's still sitting and it basically hangs down as fringe. Now the final thing that I'm going to do to kind of wrap this up is I'm going down through, I've gone back through that loop there, I'm going back down through my 4 millimeter bead, and I'm gonna, it looks like this is the front now, apparently. So I'm gonna push it to the back. Whatever side my stop bead is on, that's the side that I'm like, okay, that's the back. And I'm going to go down now and come through. So it looks like I already kind of came down through a seed bead. I'm gonna go down through my 11 0 right here. That just happens to be right at the halo, right through the six millimeter bead, and right out next to, oh, through the stop bead. We're gonna take that off anyway. I'm going to take that stop bead off, sliding that down. See, I'm just sliding it off. That's the joy of a stop bead. Take it off my thread and needle. And then, so simple, go in, take your thread ends, and literally tie a knot right over left, left over right, and get that in there, too. Okay. All right. To do, to do. Once you have that done, I like to go in and take my thread zap or my thread burner and pull the top off of it right before I use it. And our thread burners get a lot of wear and tear, so they're always just a little bit not great. There's, an ear wire There's one ear wire, so I can model it. So then in goes my thread burner, my thread zap, 
burn off my thread ends because I used green. Good to go. Hold on, I'm gonna do the moment of <laughs> the moment of shine. I take my earrings off. What do I have? I have some 20 gauge silver. That'll work. But I'll show you how to make an ear wire real quick. When in a pinch, grab some 20 gauge wire. Roll that 20 gauge wire right over. Grab yourself a highlighter or your thread burner that's in your hand. Bend around your thread burner, your thread zap, till it touches right there. Take it off. Cut it right there where it touches. Take your needle nose pliers and bend up the back of your wire. That's a really exaggerated one. You can pull it down, you can open it up, kind of up to you. I'm then gonna open up my ear wire, turning to the side. I'm gonna put my, I need gold wire, I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna drive me crazy, but I'm gonna <laughs> put them on. Put that on, close it up, and then the moment of the, ta-da, I only have one here, but I took my earrings off so I could get both. Get that through there. And then, ta-da. So this ear wire is really big. I would actually go like this. I'm gonna bend just it. bend it in my ear so that way it sits a little higher. But there is my green earring that's disappearing <laughs> on my green screen. Oh, I never think about that when I do designs. I'm like, it's just kind of not there. Where did that's it because, go? where did it go? You can see my fingers through it. <laughs> the green screen, you can see the bead store through it. That's not even the bead store anymore. Um, the warehouse strip. So there is the way that the earring looks. If I get it on the other side, I'm actually here ready. I'm gonna do my other scrap piece. We're gonna clear it up. Ben, Jenny's gonna wear hers as a pendant. You wearing yours as a pendant? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hold it up and wear it as a pendant amongst your things. See, so you could just put it on your little chain there too. Make do. Jenny's gonna hold hers up. I'm gonna hold mine up. Hold on, I gotta put my other earring on. Do, 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 do. You could use my. All right, I made my other ear wire. And now, I think it was, uh, was it Kathy or Car Carla that said if you want to, now you could go in and you can kind of glue it to the sides, that's up to you, but it'll really stay just the way, <laughs> just lean back, <laughs> lean back. All right, and there are my earrings. So you can't really see them because they're green, but there they are. And you can have fun with all, well, I actually really like that. It looks nice with your shirt too. You can wear um, all the different styles of brick stitch all different ways and have fun with it. Uh, again, if you want to, you can go into after the video, there'll be a little drop down. My head was covered most of the time down here with the whole like subscribe and click to subscribe to us so you can subscribe to us there as well to get regular updates from us at Potomac Beads and when we randomly go live also. So I'm hoping to come to you next Tuesday again with another class and we'll be there live. Everybody say thanks Jenny for the design. Mm -hmm. Thanks Jay for the design. Um, keep in mind this will be available after. You can slow it down if you want to learn the brick stitch and then also check out a lot of the other brick stitch earrings. So thanks so much for watching everybody. Mm -hmm. Have a great rest of your day and that's all from us Bye. now. Bye.